Hi, my name is Bill Bartow. I'm a reliability engineer with Lifecycle Engineering. Today I'm going to tell you a quick story about mean time between failure or the MTBF metric and some of the pitfalls of its misuse. Okay, here's the story. We show up on site and our client shows us two systems that have been running for the exact same amount of time over the last two months. In month one, system one had a mean time between failure of 25. In the same month, system two had a mean time between failure of 30. The next month, system one then had an NTBF of 46, while system two had a mean time between failure of 50. Based on this information alone, you may choose to devote your resources to system one because a lower mean time between failure indicates lower reliability. Is that the right decision? We wanted to find a little bit more about how they came up with their mean time between failure data. So we asked them for the runtime and the number of failures that each system had in each month. So we can see here is this example that system one in month one ran for 150 hours and had six failures. And that's how they came up with their mean time between failure of 25. And we can see that they provided that data for each month and for each system. But what we find out that as we go into the last two months and we combine those two months together, we actually find out that both systems ran for, 100, or for 840 hours, but the number of failures does not come out to be the same. For system one, in both months, they ended up with 21 failures, but for system two, they ended up with 24 failures. This gives us a mean time between failure of 40 for system one and 35 for system two. And what we can see is, that within months one and two, system two had a larger mean time between failure, indicating higher reliability. But when you combine the two months together, it actually turns out that system one had the higher mean time between failure. So how does this affect the way that we devote our resources? And what kind of pitfalls have we learned about using mean time between failure? So what have we learned from this example? One of the things we've learned is that mean time between failure has an assumption that there's a constant failure rate. And what we can see from our example here is that system one and system two are not exhibiting a constant failure rate. In each month, the mean time between failure has been increasing, and that's what ends up giving us the different mean time between failures when we combine the two months together. So when you're making the decision about how to devote resources, you want to look at things other than just a single metric. Some of those might be the impact of the value stream or the cost to perform the maintenance on these pieces of equipment. So if you'd like more information about this topic and many other topics, please send us an email at info at lce.com. Thank you.